Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7B electric circuits practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we are gonna be working with today. It's a very simple electric circuit. It has three resistors, out of which we know the value of two out of three. Uh, so do feel free to pause the video in order to copy the circuit so that you can follow along. But basically we have to run some currents, find the resistor that we don't have the value for, and then find the uh, voltage of the battery. So as you can see, I have my, you know, resistor over here in big and blue. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, get started. So the first thing that I have to do is to rank the currents on this um, circuit. And well, you might think that um, we actually need to find this resistor first, but this is not the case because you know, first of all, let's just figure out how many currents do we have. Is it the same current or are they like different? Well, we have three different currents in this system actually because first of all, we have our total current, which is this one over here. The total current is always the current that crosses the battery. So this current is a total current. So the current that crosses R1 is all of it, the entire current. And then once we hit this junction over here, uh, remember from what we saw in lecture, whenever we hit a junction, the current splits up. So whenever the current gets here, it basically splits up into two currents. One current follows this part over here, and then the other current goes down here. So if this is total, I'm just gonna call them, say I1 and I2 over here. So the current is basically gonna split in two and then once these two currents get over here, they are gonna recombine and we are gonna see that we get all of the current back over here. Uh, so now, just the same as with fluids, we can postulate a continuity equation every time that we get into a junction in a circuit. So for every junction, we can postulate a continuity equation. What does this mean? Well, take this junction over here and then see how many currents are going into the junction and then see how many currents are going out of the junction and because there needs to be continuity, we need uh, to conserve charge, then that means that whatever amount of current is going into the junction needs to be going out of it. So this is sort of like our, what goes in must go out, quote unquote, that we use on circuit, uh, that we use on fluids a lot, I'm sorry, but we basically use it over here at the junctions. Um, now another thing about junctions is that a junction is whenever two or more wires are combined. So this is a junction because we have, you know, at least two wires over here like this. Now this is not a junction because even though we have these 90 degrees, this is just the same wire, so this is just a change in direction. Uh, but we don't have two or more wires, therefore this is not a junction, this is a junction. This is a junction and these corners are not junctions for the for the same, you know, using the same reasoning. It has to be two or more. So anyways, uh, going back to our continuity equation. Uh, so remember how in fluids we said like whatever comes in has to go out. Well, we are basically going to do exactly the same in this junction. Uh, what's coming in, it's the uh, total current. And that has to be equal to what is going out of the junction. So in this case, um, that would be I1 plus I2. And this is our continuity equation for this junction. This is how we postulate it. We look at what's going in, we look at what's going out, and that is how we do it. Now we could have chosen this junction over here, and this junction, of course, is gonna have its own uh, continuity equation. So what goes in, that would be I2 plus I1 
has to be equal to what goes out of the junction. So in this case, what is going out of the junction is just the total current. So as you can see, uh, regardless of which, which of these junctions you're picking, you're gonna get the same continuity equation. Uh, and that is always gonna happen with parallel circuits. You're always gonna have like pairs of junctions. Uh, but you can use whichever in order to solve this uh, problem because as you can see, uh, the current that's crossing R1 is the total current. And because the total current is equal to the addition of the other two, that means that regardless of the value of this resistor, it doesn't matter if it's one or 8,000, this current has to be greater than these two because there is no such thing as a, well, we're not gonna be working against the flow, which means that all of our currents in physics 7b and all of our practice problems are going to be positive. So uh, this is the greater current. So final answer will be, uh, well, not, fi not final answer. We just know that this one is the greatest. Now, another thing that we have to figure out for our ranking, because we are ranking the currents, is that we know that these two guys have to add up to this one. So this one has to be the biggest one. But we actually don't know which one is bigger, this one or this one. They are not the same because these resistors are not the same in value, so we can't just assume that it's like 50% and 50% of this one. Um, so we actually need to figure out which one is greater. Now, at this point in the L, you've seen that, um, you know, current favors the path of least resistance, which means that the resistor, you know, the the highest resi the higher resistor is going to have less current and the uh, lower resistor is going to have more current now this is the it, it is inversely proportional and the reason is that the current favors lower resistances um so yeah it is inversely proportional so let's just go ahead and look at which resistor is higher so in this case uh we have 12 ohms versus 6 ohms over here so that means that um, this current I2 has to be greater because it's crossing a um, smaller resistor. So that basically is gonna be um, our final answer and that's basically gonna be, uh, you know, our justification for the final answer. So I total, which is the one that crosses this resistor is the greatest and then um, I2 and then I1 would be the smallest one, like this. Final answer. So now let's just go ahead and figure out part two, which is if the equivalent resistance is 18 ohms, then what is R1? So we are given two of the resistors and we're given the equivalent resistance. Now the equivalent resistance is basically if you combine every single resistor that you have in your circuit, the uh, the total resistance or the equivalent resistance will be, you know, this number. So obviously what we have to do is, um, you know, reduce this circuit into something that we can maybe get an equation that will relate this guy, uh, because we do need this information. We, we do need to use this information because we're not giving E or I at this point. So let's just go ahead and reduce our circuit. Well, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine this resistor with this resistor and both of them are in parallel. Now remember what I said in lecture, resistors in parallel begin and end in the same junction. So this guy begins over here. This guy, there is nothing in between. So it also begins over here and they end at the exact same junction also. So by definition, they are in parallel. So my reduced circuit will basically be something like this. So I'm not doing anything to R1. So I'm just copy pasting this part. This part I'm also not doing any alterations on. So this just stays like this. And now this guy over here, I need to find the equivalent resistance of these two. So this resistance uh, is just a parallel resistor. And this is gonna be 
uh, 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6 and then I need to remember that this is you know I have to flip my answer in order to get this number over here so let me just go ahead and figure that on a calculator so this is um, 6 4 ohms So now we have one resistor that we know nothing about, uh, one battery that we don't know nothing about, and this other resistor that is four ohms. The other important piece of information that we have is that if we combine these two guys, uh, the equivalent resistance should be 18 ohms. Now, these two guys over here, they are not in parallel because they have one junction in common, but not both of them. So that means that they are not in parallel. Um, and basically, since we're only doing series and parallel, if they're not in parallel, they are in series. So um, let's just... So that means that if we combine these two in series, we're going to get an R equivalent, which means that... Um, so this is 18 ohms, and this is also equal to this in series, which is just R1 plus 4 ohms like this so this basically means that r1 is just 18 minus 4 so r1 is equal to 14 ohms final answer so this was basically just a matter of reducing your circuit a little bit and uh, just knowing that these two guys were in parallel uh, but then these two guys were in series and then if you're given the equivalent resistance, you can just solve for whatever resistor um, you're trying to solve. So now let's just go ahead and look at the uh, third question, which is the current coming out of the battery is 2 amps. What is the battery voltage E? Okay, so how can we figure this out? Well, um, we can basically use a loop rule. Yeah, so we can basically use a loop rule. Let's see. So if I reduce this circuit, I already have my equivalent resistance, so I don't need to do any extra steps. So we can work with this circuit. This is E, this is um, 18. And then this is the total current. Uh, the total current is always a current that's crossing the battery. So this current over here that's pink is the exact same current that's over here in green um, because they are both crossing, you know, the battery. So we have this value which is equal to 2 and with that we can basically calculate what this value is. So what we're going to do is basically use a loop rule. So let's see. So I'm going to use a loop rule on this thing and I'm just going to start and end in the same point. So I'm just picking this corner. So if I start over here, the first thing that I cross is this resistor and delta B for a resistor is negative IR. Now um, I circle around over here my circuit and then I encounter this battery over here. So this is plus squiggly E over here and because I'm doing a loop this has to be equal to zero. E is the thing that I'm looking for because I'm looking for the amount of volts that the battery is supplying. So E is just equal to the total current because it's the current that's flowing through here times the resistor which in this case is the equivalent resistor. Um, so E is equal to, what's the total current again? 2 times 18. So epsilon or the value of the battery, final answer is 36 volts. Because an amp times an ohm is equal to a volt. And there we go. This basically, uh, this is basically the end of our quiz over here. So it's a very good uh, you know, initial problem to solve because you're working uh, series, you're working parallels, you're working your definition of an equivalent resistance, and you're using your loop rule over here. So I would say that this is a very good problem to start with and to really study 
Uh, we also applied our uh, junction rule over here, which is important. Um, so if you found this problem helpful, uh, you know, please make sure to leave a like. If you have any question, please make sure to leave it on the comments. We do read the comments. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, good luck with your studying and I'll see you on the next video.